Hello and welcome to step nine of the research project. We are closing in on the home stretch. We're on step nine out of ten. Nice job getting here so far. Just a little bit more of a push and we will finish up. Our goal today is to create an outline for our research paper. I've said it before. I'll say it again. The, the end product of our research project here is a hopefully around three to four page research paper where you are going to explain to the reader your topic, you're going to introduce your research question, your thesis statement, and give lots of evidence to prove why your thesis statement is true. That might sound a little overwhelming, like how am I going to write that much? But if you follow through on all the steps, then you've already done a lot of notes, and you've already created your question, your thesis statement, and when you see the outline, hopefully it will not be that difficult to fill out. So go ahead and click the link for the research paper outline and open it up in a new tab. And you'll see the directions here to make your own copy. Right now you can only view this version and you can't edit it. So we're going to go up here, click on File, and select Make a Copy. You can leave the title the way it is. You could put your name up here, whatever you want to do. But the key is you want to put it in your Research 2018 folder. For me, oops, it's this one. And select. Okay, great. So that'll open up the copy. The original one you can now close out of. You don't need any more. As it says, use all of the articles, notes, and documents from the previous steps to help you complete the outline. If I just give you an overview of this right now, there are going to be six paragraphs we're looking to write. So each one has its own sort of table on here. We have the introduction, and it's broken down into parts, starting with the hook, and then a paragraph with background information. Then we're going to have three body paragraphs, which are set up using a tease format, which you should be familiar with. And lastly, we have the conclusion, which is broken down into three parts. To show you how to fill some of these things out and then the rest you're going to be able to tackle on your own. With the introduction the first thing you always want to start with and this is applicable not just to research papers but to all sorts of different pieces of writing is a hook. The first one to two sentences that attempt to grab the reader's attention so that they will want to read your paper. I've put throughout the outline a couple of links that might help you. So it says click here for additional assistance. If I do that and follow the link, it takes me to this writing studio website and it talks about a couple of different types of hooks. You can start with a question. You can start with a quotation. You could start with a statistic or you could start with an anecdote, which is like a, a short story related to the topic. Read through these, decide which one makes sense for you and what you want to do, uh, and go ahead and type that in, just in the space underneath. Then topic overview. You want one to two sentences that briefly explain your topic. So you've given a hook, now you need to say sort of what your topic is. So my topic in this example is Saudi Arabia ending its ban on women driving. So maybe for the topic overview, I'll say, Saudi Arabia, a country in the Middle East, has had a ban on women driving for many decades. This ban was highly unpopular and finally came to an end in 2015. So just two sentences there to really briefly explain my topic. Okay. For my hook, if I go back up here and add this real quick, maybe I'll start with a question and I'll say, can you imagine what life would be like if you were never allowed to drive. Now, 
all of you listening to this, uh, you have not been allowed to drive yet because you're not old enough. But imagine that your parents were in this situation where they weren't allowed to drive, how that would affect their daily routine, their ability to get to work, their ability to go to the grocery store, all sorts of things. So that's a sort of an interesting question for people to think about. And then my topic overview ties right in. My research question and thesis statement. If you don't remember these off the top of your head, they should be in your Google Drive. Let's go check mine and look for them. So here's my research 2018 folder. If I open my copy of creating a thesis statement, I should have this in a chart at the bottom. Aha, uh -huh, I do. So my research question, why did Saudi Arabia end its ban on women driving? I'm going to copy and paste that in to my outline. Very simple. Thesis statement, same thing. I'm going to copy and paste it in. The government of Saudi Arabia finally agreed to end the ban on women driving because of years of protest from ordinary citizens. Okay, there we go. Now the next paragraph is for background information. It says four to seven sentences that explain your topic to the reader. Imagine the reader has never heard of this topic before. What are the important things they need to know? Consider the who, what, when, where, why, and how of your topic. Again, you're trying to just give some context to the reader. I'm trying to explain to them why Saudi Arabia ended its ban on women driving. But if they've never heard of Saudi Arabia, don't know where it is, don't know what form of government they have, don't understand what the people and the culture are like, then it's going to be difficult for them to follow my research paper. So I will put some information in. You might have this kind of boiling around in your head already because of all the reading you've done with your different sources, or you might need to go back and look at some of your sources, look at what you highlighted, look at the notes that you took. For example, if I go back to my Research 2018 folder here, I've got my articles. Maybe I open this one, Women Take the Wheel. And I can look through some of the things that I have here. This highlight right here is great background information. Saudi Arabia is a monarchy that is governed according to Islamic law. If I go to the bottom, I can see what my note was about that. Saudi Arabia has a monarchy, follows the rules of Islam, one of the major world religions. There's nothing in the teaching of Islam that says women can't drive. So when I start to type my background information here, I'll say Saudi Arabia is a monarchy. This is a form of government where a royal family is in charge. Saudi Arabia currently is led by a king. The king makes decisions in Saudi Arabia based upon the teachings of Islam, a major world religion. There is nothing in the teaching of Islam that says women shouldn't be allowed. Um, type in too fast so I make mistakes. I'll go back and fix that in a moment. Shouldn't be allowed to drive. Therefore, many people disliked this rule and it thankfully changed in 2015. So this is a pretty good start for background information. I would probably need to go a little bit more in depth if I was writing this for real, but seeing as how I'm just giving you an example and I don't want to take up all of your time with this video, we're going to move on. The body paragraphs are set up as teased responses. Again, you should be pretty familiar with these. There are three body paragraphs, so you need to identify three reasons why your thesis statement is true. Okay? 
And then for each of those reasons, you need two pieces of evidence. Again, you're going to want to go back, look at what you highlighted, the notes that you took um, in your four sources, and use that as the starting point. Hopefully a lot of this is just going to kind of be going back and plugging things in that you've already done. So I said for my thesis statement, the government of Saudi Arabia finally agreed to end the ban on women driving because of years of protest from ordinary citizens. So now I need to show that this is true. One reason I'm going to say is many women and men in Saudi Arabia were brave and risked their lives by protesting against the women driving ban. Okay, now I need a piece of evidence. So I go back to that article I was just looking at. Let's go up a little bit. Let's see what we can find. Keep getting emails. Well, let's look at this highlight right here. Many Saudi women, some of whom have fought for decades for the right to drive, are thrilled by the news. And this is from Patricia Smith. So I'm going to take that highlight. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to remove the, the highlighted color from it because I don't need that anymore. I'm going to put it in quotation marks, and then in parentheses, I'm going to put Smith, the last name of the author, so that I give credit to it. And I'm going to explain that a little bit. Saudi women are now celebrating because their hard work has paid off. They organized protests for decades in an attempt to convince the government to change the law. Okay, so I added my evidence, I gave credit to the source that it comes from, and I've explained it. My next piece of evidence might come from a different one of my articles, so I could go through and look, explain it again. A summary sentence is where you summarize the main points of the paragraph and transition to the next paragraph. Again, I put a link in here. If you need help with transitions, you can go ahead and click this. And kind of scroll down here, transitional devices. So these are all examples of words that you might use at the end or at the beginning of a paragraph to introduce a new idea or connect to the next idea or just kind of summarize. So this is a useful resource for you to look at. Back to the outline. You'll see the second and third body paragraphs set up in the same way. And finally, you have a conclusion. The conclusion should be the easiest part for you to write. You don't introduce any new evidence. You restate your thesis statement. You summarize your main reasons from those body paragraphs about why your thesis statement is true. And then the final thing you do is explain to the reader why it is important for them to agree with your thesis statement. They just read, you know, three pages of your paper. Why did they do that? What is so important about this topic? And why did you want people to learn about this? That's what you need to explain. So maybe I put something here about the victory for women in Saudi Arabia should be celebrated across the globe and will hopefully inspire more countries to grant equal rights to women. So I know this was a long video. I appreciate you taking the time to watch it. Hopefully you have a good understanding of how to complete your outline, but if you need any help, feel free to raise your hand and call me over or Mr. Martin and we will set you straight.
Good luck.